Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Outside the Box, and uh, today we're going to talk about some comments made by Phil Spencer, who's been recently promoted as a member of the board over at Microsoft, and he's still the head of Xbox, and we're talking about crossplay because it's a topic that just won't go away. We actually recently talked about it on our podcast, and you can actually check out our podcast discussion with Eric, myself, and HMK, the hype man himself, up here. But let's get into the new comments by Phil Spencer, who seems to be recognizing some of the reasons that PlayStation isn't uh, willing to work with Microsoft and Nintendo on crossplay, and uh, why he doesn't agree with their stance. So let's get right into the exact quotes. Phil Spencer says this on crossplay We talk to Sony all the time. With Minecraft on PlayStation, we have to be one of the biggest games on their platform in terms of sales and gameplay. Same with Nintendo. The relationship with Nintendo on this front has been strong. They've been great supporters and we continue to collaborate with them. But I think Sony's view is different. They should talk about what their view is. So he's kind of calling Sony out saying, hey, you obviously view things differently, you should come forward with it. They've kind of talked around the topic. And he goes on to say this, I have a real struggle making comments about their motivation or timelines. I know there is a certain view that says, if my friends have this console, they can't play with people who buy another console. That's a reason to go buy my console. I think people look at crossplay and say, it is better for gamers. If it's better for gamers, I have a hard time thinking why we shouldn't go do this. Especially when you're trying to make the gaming business a bigger business. Grow it, get more games, create more opportunity. Especially in the indie space. Actually, if you're creating an online indie game and you're going to create five shards of your game. The Steam version, the Xbox Live, PC, Xbox version, the PlayStation version, the Switch version creates hard matchmaking scenarios. We should help developers not make their lives more difficult. And this actually brings up a point that we brought up in the podcast about how crossplay is beneficial for gamers. It's beneficial for developers. The only people that might view it as not beneficial to themselves are people like PlayStation who probably have the mindset that, hey, look, we don't have crossplay with Xbox and Nintendo because if you want to play with your friends that own a PlayStation 4, you better come buy a PlayStation 4. And they could take this stance and get away with it, as they have so far, because they are the market leaders. Now, some people might bring up the fact that Microsoft is saying this, and really, PlayStation doesn't want to work with Xbox Live, but that's already been debunked by now. Fortnite released and had uh, cross-play between Xbox One and PlayStation 4 happening day one. Uh, it was a mistake and was removed quickly after Sony caught wind of it. But, and notice, it was after Sony caught wind. Uh, it had nothing to do with Xbox Live. Everything worked through the game itself. Xbox Live was not involved. Rocket League is going to have crossplay between PC, Switch, and Xbox One, and it's not going to include PlayStation 4 in there. Uh, it does not use Xbox Live. So again, like any excuse over Xbox Live is just an excuse. It, it's not really what's holding them up. What's holding them up is exactly what Phil Spencer said, that mentality that we need to hold back on allowing crossplay to force people to buy our platform. And... Well, I understand from a business perspective why that might feel like a good idea. That almost feels like an idea you would do if you're not the market leader. There's plenty of reasons to buy a PlayStation 4. Uh, I have a future episode coming up where I'm talking about exclusives and their importance to selling systems versus, uh, you know, if it's actually healthy for the gaming community to have exclusives. But when we're talking about things like crossplay, we're talking about helping out gamers and developers and basically you have the console provider, the gamers and the developers and if something helps out two of the three then you probably should do it. At this point this attitude coming from Sony on this or their lack of proper responses right back during E3 it was about protecting the children. Uh, later uh, Shishida came out and said hey look uh, it's just complicated, it's complex, the technologies are difficult, and the conversations are difficult, which apparently they're not, because Sony and Microsoft themselves have very little to do with whether a game can crossplay or not. It's the developers wanting to do it and developing the technologies on their end, and then flipping a switch. Uh, all Xbox, Microsoft, Nintendo, all these companies have to do is say, yep, you can do that. 
Uh, obviously things get complicated in there, you know, like when Microsoft wants to use Xbox Live on Minecraft, which makes sense because they own Minecraft, it's their IP, they're obviously going to want to use Xbox Live. If Nintendo had a cross-play game that for some reason they released on other platforms, you know, say they brought Splatoon 2 over to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, they're obviously going to want to use the Nintendo account system. Uh, and that provides a whole extra layer of depth and concern that some people might have. But if you think about it, even when you go play Madden, right? I, I play Madden on Xbox One every year. You have Madden on Xbox One, Madden on PlayStation 4. Uh, when you play Madden between those two platforms, on both of them, regardless of if you're on the PlayStation Network or the Xbox Live Network, you have to create accounts with EA. So you could easily have all those EA accounts be able to play matches against each other. And I understand that there's going to be competitive concerns. A game might have better frame rates on another platform. A game might have this, a game might have that. And I understand that there are performance differences that could lead to unfair advantages, but let consumers and developers worry about that. If developers have to dial back a game a little bit on one platform to make sure the performance matches across the board, then they will do that. Let the developers concern about that. Let the gamers worry about that. Don't let the platform holders really hold this whole thing hostage and that's what it feels like is happening with Sony. Now I'm tired of talking about crossplay. Just like I'm sure many people out there are tired of talking about loot boxes. That seems to be the hot topic now. We gotta talk about loot boxes. Are they good? Are they bad? Are they a gambling addiction? Are they good to have around children? Uh, are they good to have in a $60 game? Should they only be in free games? Should they exist at all? Do loot boxes really hurt anything? I, it, it's an interesting conversation just like crossplay is. But it's one that ultimately has no solution. One thing is clear about loot boxes. They're not going anywhere. They're, they're here to stay. Just like microtransactions and DLC, it's here to stay. Like it or not, they're not going to go anywhere. Overwatch just made like a billion dollars in one year, primarily because of loot boxes. It, it's not heading anywhere. Uh, Crossplay is going to be a topic that unfortunately isn't going to go anywhere as long as there's still one company holding out. And that company is in a position of power as the market leader sony can kind of do and say whatever they want and this is one reason why you might say oh nintendo didn't stop it because nintendo's behind xbox didn't stop it because xbox behind and i think that argument is bollocks as well if you think about it sony builds their reputation with playstation around being for the gamers but yet this decision to block crossplay isn't really for the gamers it's a benefit to themselves. It goes against the reputation they have built up with PlayStation 1, 2, 3, and 4. Sony is heading down that path of when they're at the top, they like to be cocky as heck. And block blocking crossplay is just another example of that cockiness. I hope for Sony's sake, I hope for PlayStation 4 gamers' sake, and future you know PlayStation gamers, whether it be on another handheld system, if they bring out like a Vita 2, or if it is on a PlayStation 5, or whatever is coming next after the PlayStation 4 Pro, that Sony opens the window to this ability to have cross-platform play. If you're willing to allow multi-platform games to be on your platform, why does cross-platform play matter? It doesn't have any impact on Sony. No one is buying <laughs> a Sony platform to play FIFA with their friends. Uh, they're buying it for Uncharted and The Last of Us and the copious amount of games on there. I know they said Knack 2 come out recently, The Last Guardian, yada, yada, yada. The zillions of games that are on that platform are why people are buying it. Uh, combined with some people just care about power and right now until Xbox One X comes out, PlayStation 4 Pro is the most powerful box on the market. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jans from Nintendo Prime. You guys let me know what you think about this whole cross-play fiasco down in the comments below. Is this something that matters to you? I felt like this was a good topic for a new Outside the Box, even though we've talked about this a few times this year, because the situation keeps getting more and more interesting, and there's more and more pressure, especially from Microsoft here, being applied to Sony to finally do something about this. And... Do you think that maybe Microsoft shouldn't say, be saying these kind of things? Maybe they should be backing up and being like, look, if they don't want to support crossplay, let's leave it alone. Um, I honestly hope that Nintendo hops in as well, personally, and starts to push Sony as well. So you have it coming from all fronts, PC, Sony, and <laughs> Microsoft all looking at, at, at Sony and being like, hey, look, we, we need you. you know, Nintendo PC, Microsoft, we need you to stop being like this, stop being anti-consumer, start being anti-indie developer, and come on over to the side of light. I love the PlayStation platform. I love the Xbox platform. I love the Nintendo platform, most of all. And I love PC. I mean, see this thing back here? That's a, that's a pretty beefy PC gaming rig. I love it. 
I want us to all be able to play together without requiring someone to own every platform under the sun. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Rufflejans from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. We're giving away a copy of Super Mario Odyssey. So if you go down to the description below, click on that gleam.io URL. That'll give you a chance to enter. There's multiple ways to enter. The only requirement is that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. And you know what, folks? I'm just going to catch you in the next one.